friends I think we're going to be in for a very enjoyable season. Welcome back to another episode and a brand new season of Outcast 2 Icons with me, a very, very excited man. I realise I start a lot of episodes with that, but it's just true. If you have been enjoying the series up to this point, drop a like. That would be fabulous. Uh, love the Algorithm Ultras as well, of course. This is episode, proper episode, 100 of this series. And the fact that we're already on season 16 of that is kind of nuts. And I don't really see it slowing down anytime soon, really. I really do feel like we have the opportunity to potentially go all the way with Sassuolo. But in the back of my mind, there is always that problem of if we fluked our way to a final and ended up playing an outrageously good side, things could go very, very wrong for us. But I almost kind of like the jeopardy that exists with that. So we're starting on the page of Dinko Pavlish today just because I love showing him off. He's just outrageously good and still only 24 as well. Now, Lazio did actually bid for him. Lazio of all people in the summer they went yeah he's done kind of good things against us we'll probably try and take him 63 million was the bid and Dinko was just kind of like yeah no not really interested they were the only club that bid for him this summer as well which was kind of good now this has been a summer of sagas transfer sagas for days we've spent uh, a decent whack of change this summer uh, I, I almost had another signing, but lots more to talk about that. There's at least three transfer sagas that need to be discussed, to be honest. Also, Champions League draw, end of the episode, definitely doing that too. Opening today's things off with a game against Torino in the league as well, with the new style of approach that we're going to try and take into some of our more winnable games this season as well. Hopefully try and score a few more goals. But I feel like with that new tactical style, it's definitely going to be that that's against the weaker sides. If we have to play our rotated side ourselves, I might revert back because I think we do need our best players to make that system work because it is very high risk high reward but i kind of like that it's a bit more fun expect to see a lot more goals from us this year and a lot more conceded too but that's that's part of the fun in it now over the course of the summer of course we've been making many many signings indeed and no doubt your club have too and the best bit of you to stay on top of all the transfers that your club has make and all the others from around europe and the rest of the world is of course with the one football app you'll be the first to know on all the big transfers for your club and any of the others that matter to you and then when the season does get started of course you'll be able to keep up with all of the games with live score notifications fan voting team lineups direct to your phone so another huge thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring this video and you can download the app for free with the link in the top line of the description. First things first, admin. I asked the board if they would potentially expand, expand the stadium because it's very small compared to where we are. The board said, nah, we're doing all right, mate. And I went, all right, I guess. So that's good, isn't it? Um, we're going to be stuck in this stadium for a while. We got up to 93 million in the bank and the, we're now considered rich as well by the game. But the board are just like, no, we, we don't want to be doing that. Also, new contract for Siggy Jonsson. I was on the fence about what to do about him, but I decided that he's an important member of this team and he is the team captain. So a new contract for him. His wage, actually, weirdly, he only wanted five grand a week more. New contracts as well for Uriate and Milivojev, our sort of defensive uh, pairing. I was on the fence about that as well, but I thought, you know what? They need these new contracts, tie these guys down, and they're both on five-year deals now. So that's really good just to see them stay because I really, really like them. So, let's talk about some transfers out, because there have been a couple, sort of. Nikolos, oh sorry, Nikos Konstantinou has uh, left the club. He's gone to Marseille on a free transfer. Uh, he's on way less wages there, I think, regardless. But yeah, he wanted to leave. I wasn't really going to stand in his way. I felt that we could at least plug the gaps for a season while we look for stuff. It's always kind of difficult in Italy with the fact that with that one non-EU rule, and believe me, it's even more complex than that, as we found out every single season, there's a new little hurdle to jump through. We really have to prioritise that non-EU signing each year. Um, not that I, don't, I think he did count as EU, to be fair. And the only other out is uh, Demi Aloise. We bought him in for free last summer, sold him for five billion this summer. Ah. Right, now on to the ins. A few returning stars too. The first of which is Candido, back for a second season. He is uh, looking a lot older than 20 at the moment. I've got to give him that. He's, he's had a rough time of it, but he's back for another season for us. Happy to do it, really. If Barcelona only wanted us to pay his wages, I liked the sort of output that we saw from him last season, uh, particularly towards the end. So I was more than happy to have another loan spell for Candido. You might notice that all the players now have uh, regen faces because I felt that was important to have this time. So here is Candido. Sorry, just had to sort out these bloody menus again every time I change the skin. It's probably because of the putting the faces like right before the start of this video, but there you go. Dan Mihilshaya is a permanent signing uh, for the club. £56,000 a week. He is on a decent amount, 
but I've really liked his work for us over the past couple of seasons. And once again, whenever I get the opportunity to take a player on a free transfer from Inter, you know I'm going to do that. Particularly one that comes in and is already worth 25 million quid and we've just poached him on a free transfer. Um, I've enjoyed his work. He does have outrageously good mentals uh, as well. Even if his technicals in places aren't spectacular, we tend to get good performances out of old Dan. And I still think that's a good area. He doesn't like big matches, which is definitely a problem. But when you have an opportunity to sign a guy of this quality for free, you can't really say no, can you? Our second free signing is Brazilian uh, Leocio, but, and this is the beautiful thing about him, he's counted as EU because he came through at Braga, which is even better. Now, he's the guy I picked up on a free transfer from Inter that I talked to you guys about. He's he's younger, he's not like a superb signing by any means, but it was available relatively cheap. The thing I liked about him the most was that he had 17 crossing, and he did have 17 dribbling at the time, but that's currently taking a little knock. Down, uh, decent acceleration as well. Some decent technicals, basically. Now, my main reason for signing him actually wasn't to play him on the right-hand side because he's left-footed and left only, was to have him on this left hand side so we are retraining him here as an inside forward because i'm not actually bothered about the footedness of my inside forwards on that side i find that in the current shapes that we've been using it actually doesn't seem to matter that much and if anything left footed inside forward seems to do a little bit better for us from time to time so that's kind of good as well but i think for a free transfer with some of these attributes i was more than happy to do the deal so leasio is in as well and he looks very happy to be here Next up is a loan signing. This is Barry Kargman, uh, who's coming on a loan from Sampdoria for the season. Uh, the main reason I brought him in is we were sort of struggling to just find any permanent right-back deals, but we do have our young Bosnian right-back as well. I just wanted a little bit more backup in there. He feels to me very much like a Kevin type of signing, a player that's just no-nonsense, will come in. He can play on both sides, but really he's a right back and I think he'll do a solid job for us we're just paying the way oh, no there is a little loan fee but it's not a great deal of that so to bring him on, on a, a season long loan from Sampdoria he's got some nice mentors some nice physicals in there too I, I was happy to do it really just to sort of pad out the squad a little bit while I spend some time looking for a better player in that role this is Joel Gonçalves who's come in on a uh, loan from Monaco uh, a player I was looking at last summer as a potential like uh, loan option for us but he just gives us that little bit more backup behind the likes of Cabrera and Jan Bruna so I thought it was a bit of a no-brainer to bring in a guy like like this. He's got good physicals, uh, some nice mental attributes as well. Decent tackling to go with it. His marking isn't spectacular and neither is his positioning. Crossing and dribbling are kind of fine. It's always tough to get that kind of uh, quality out of players. Now, right, that's all of the freeze and the loans coming in. I want to get those stuff out of the way first because now it's transfer saga time. Before the players that did come in, I want to talk to you a little bit about a guy who didn't and I'm still baffled as to why this is, to be honest. So I found a centre back. He was playing in Russia, but he was EU national. All was good. I was like, right, I was looking for a backup centre-back, but this guy was ridiculous, to be honest. So I thought, you know what, we're just going to go in for him. Now, we had a £32.5 million release clause, which I guarantee you is a lot. But with the money we had, I honestly felt that he would have been the best centre-back at the club. And he was only 20, loads of room to improve. I thought, perfect, we'll go in for him. We'll pay the money because sometimes you can get them to drop it. I did originally try that, but eventually I just kind of went, no, we'll just pay the fee and get things done. So I put in the £32.5 million release clause and then they reject it. And I'm like, what? Just to clarify, it is not a specific. It is a specific release clause. It's release uh, thirty-two point five million pound release clause for clubs in major continental competitions. Does the Champions League not count as a major continental competition? I, I don't know. But they were able to reject my bid of his release clause. So I don't know how that's worked or how they were able to do that. But I will be annoyed as hell if he leaves in this same transfer window to another club in the Champions League. Because the only thing I can think of is that for some reason the game has decided that because we're not technically in the Champions League yet because it's not been drawn, that then bars us from making those types of transfer deals if that's the case that's dumb but that's the only thing i can think of as to the reason that we weren't allowed to trigger his release clause so i've never seen that happen before strange one next up is another player and he is the one that's going to be using our non u slot for the summer this is Augusto Rivas, an 18-year-old Argentinian left-sided player. I am absolutely stoked with this guy. I cannot believe we got him for 5 million... 2, two versus 2. 2.5, 2.5. You know I love a 2.5 deal. I am really, really happy with this guy because he's only 18 years old, has some really nice mental attributes to go with it. Good crossing, good dribbling. Even his finishing isn't too bad and has 14 composure to go along with it. Even his, like... I mean, defensive stuff isn't spectacular. Uh, not that I would want to play him back there anyway, but... But I really like him. Even his passing and vision. 15 passing and 18 vision. 16 work rate. He is a little bit off the pace on some of his physicals, but I'm hoping that can come with time. I was amazed that we were able to get this guy. And I had a whole list of South American players that I wanted, and I had to sort of make a decision of which one to go for. He was actually my second choice. There was a guy called Chambinio, great name, by the way, who was a left-sided player as well, uh, through, I think, Sao Paulo, who I put a bid in for. It was 15 million for him, so we made a better deal on this guy for sure. But when I got to the page with actually putting the bid in, the game told me that he was ineligible to be our non-EU signing. 
And I'm like, are you serious? So I think it's something to do with the fact that he hadn't played enough caps for the under 20 Brazilian side recently. And I assume Augusto Rivo ha Rivas has, uh, obviously Argentinian. But yeah, I had no idea that there was a restriction on top of a restriction on top of a restriction. But yeah, nevertheless, that's the first time I've seen that. So once again, chuck that one off on the list of things you can't do in Italy. But nevertheless, went for Augusto Rivas in the end. And honestly, I actually think we got a better deal out of it. And now one final transfer saga. This is another very weird one. This is Magnus Nissen. And no, he doesn't drive one. He actually has a mini, which is kind of cool, I suppose. He's an 18-year-old Danish striker. Would you look at some of those technicals? Oh, my giddy aunt. So, let me explain my reasoning. I wasn't really on the lookout for a striker this summer, to be honest, because we had Max LeBaire, we had Siggy. But I did kind of think to myself, if Siggy's going to operate more on that right-hand side often, then we kind of do want a bit more backup for Max LeBaire from time to time. And maybe someone that's a bit younger that can kind of do the job. And then this guy popped up onto my radar. Magnus Nissen, he was only 17 when he joined us. 17 finishing, and more important than that, 17 composure to go along with it. Now, he's obviously a poacher here, but I think he could definitely easily do a job as an advanced forward, although the passing and work rate are the only sort of downsides to him. Great, uh, great anticipation. Dribbling isn't amazing, but great first touch. Really good acceleration. His pace isn't superb, but he is six foot one as well, so it gives us a bit of aerial presence. 16 heading to go along with it. Really determined. Resilient personality. Off the ball is fantastic. Technique is brilliant. And more importantly, he was 17 when he joined us. Now, and this is the best part about this, and I don't know how this worked. Originally, Midgeland wouldn't talk to me at all. No matter what bid I put in, they just flat out rejected it. No negotiation, no nothing. And I was like, oh, okay, this could be one of those just not going to happen. So I then declared him a top transfer target. And you know you get the news article that's like linked, because sometimes you can find out maybe an asking price from the news article. <laughs> It said, Magnus Nissen linked with Sassuolo in £179 million move. And I just kind of went, yeah, slightly out of our price range, bruv. But I also thought to myself, there's no way Midgeland surely can demand 180 million for a player. So I just started knocking up the transfer fee a little bit each time. And eventually they finally went, all right, fine, fine. We'll, we'll actually negotiate with you. And in the end, I got him for 10.5 million. 10.5 million for Magnus Nissen. Now, again, there's some clauses, but... In the end, it could still only end up acquainted to like, I think, 15 million in the end with all the clauses added on top. So to get a guy of this kind of quality for that price, I really do think is a bloody good deal for us because I think he has mad ability to go quite far uh, with any team, really, with some of those attributes. If we can just pick up some of the stuff around it uh, and leave that finishing composure alone, I think there's a bloody good player available in Magnus Nissen. Our last signing is Pier Angelo Lanza. You might remember him because he scored the goal for Torino against us in like one of the final few games of last season. Uh, he's joined us for £21 million, which I realise is the most I've ever spent on a player in this save, probably. I think might well be. I think it's more than Nambuna, but he immediately comes in with a value of £35 million on a five-year deal. Uh, now, he'd asked to leave uh, Torino. That that was the issue, basically. So they transfer listed him for 21 million. There were a few other clubs interested. And I was kind of just circling the wagons at one point, just being like, well, I'm not so sure if I really want this guy, to be honest. And then I started to take a little bit look of what we could potentially do with him. Now, I haven't brought him in to be a striker, although frankly, if we needed him to, he could absolutely do the role. But you know, his finishing is 12, composure's 14. They're not like top tier. But, and this is where things start to get a bit more interesting. One of the things I was noticing about our new style of play is that our right wing on attack tended to get into the box an awful lot and find a lot of shooting positions. And the fact that this guy is a natural round doiter, by the way, which is a rarity for me in a, on a half. Him operating on that right hand side with his decent speed, incredible aerial presence as well as he is six foot five and yet can still ghost along the pitch like nobody's business. Decent mentals. Finishing of only 12. First touch is fantastic. Good work rate technique. I think him cutting in from that right-hand side and finding himself in that little overlap that we get from time to time with that 12 finishing and 14 composure for a right-sided winger, I am extremely excited to see what Pierre Angelo Lanza can do from that position this season. And honestly, for 21 million to have a player of this kind of quality, I was more than happy to do the deal. So he is the final deal that we've made. And I'm really happy with our transfers this summer. And the only thing I wish we could have done was maybe have signed that centre-back, but I mean, I'll keep trying, but I just don't know what's going on with that one. Uh, clause expires in like two years, but I don't know. Maybe I'll try again once we're actually in the Champions League groups and see if it changes. But yeah, that concludes our business. I'm excited about what we can do. I think we've built some strength into this team. Very few players, obviously some other players have left, the likes of Marcus Paolo and people like that, and uh, Mohamed Kudus as well on free transfers, which freed up a load of wage budget. We still have tons of money knocking about, but I never said I was going to spend all of it because I do want to make sure that we remain financially stable. It would just be a bit over the top to have that, I think. Also, weirdly, Liverpool bid for Luca Moscatelli. 
Liverpool wanted Luca Moscatelli. And honestly, I would have been happy to do the deal if they'd offered more than £1.5 million. So, yeah. Now, obviously, we've been rotating around the squads, trying to build up a bit of match fitness, but it's been difficult over this period. Moscatelli will not start in goal. Milivojev, not Milivojev, Milosevic will start in goal. Bruna, Uriate, Milivojev, Michal Cheya, Pavlish, Hewitt, that's fine. Candido on the left-hand side, or do I want to try Rivas out for today? Although his match fitness is struggling a little bit. I definitely want him in this on the bench, if nothing else. Lanza definitely on the right. Not Cuarto through the middle. I'd rather have Glavash there. And instead of Sigerson through the middle, I'm going to go... I'm, you know, I was tempted to start Max LeBear here, but he had a little injury in preseason. He's only just recovered, hence why his match fitness is very low compared to the others. But then Magnus Nissen has also had a slight injury. I might actually be tempted to start Siggy through the middle today, just until we can sort that situation out, uh, with both Nissen and LeBear having slight knocks. And Sigurdsson's actually performed very well in some of the preseason friendlies. But yeah, tactic hasn't changed at all. Uh, just kind of want to see how we do in some actual positive fixtures. We're unbeaten in seven games against Torino at the moment. So there's that. Oh, they've got Joshua Vanyaman. Now, we are, of course, away from home, but I still feel like this team can do some good stuff for us. We've definitely strengthened. I like a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Lanza, within 10 seconds, has gone full Vinnie Jones on the Torino defenders. I'm all right with that, and now he's going at people. Um, hopefully, he's not going to overdo it on the aggression. Changiano. Ooh, that's a good pass, actually. Roger Henrique. Nice ball inside for Esposito, and it's going to be one... This is so similar to the game we played against Torino last time. They scored within a couple of seconds <laughs> against us last time. Directly from our own corner breakdown, uh, not particularly good. We don't get on in on uh, Changiano quick enough. That, that's the main thing here. We don't close him down fast enough. And once they get to this position, Roger Henrique doesn't shoot, which I thought he was going to. And it's an easy goal for Luca Esposito. Okay, we've got to come from behind. That's fine. Out wide to Bruna. Lovely ball. Whips it across. And Candido. It's a good save. Nice work, though. Find a pass. He can. Candido. Across the box. And it's Chris Hewitt. And it's deflected wide. But Candido's there. And it's put in the bottom corner by Josip Glavash. And that has been coming. We have been all over Torino since falling behind. Josip Glavash scores his first of hopefully many goals this season. And it's nice to see him showing that he can still score goals for us while playing in more of a playmaking role. Um, but we just tore through them here. Lovely pick out from Candido to find Chris Hewitt. His initial shot is a bit weak. But the way that it falls onto the path of Candido again, I think. Pulling it back for Glavash. Oh, that nearly deflected it in. That's fine, actually. Just goes back post Lanza. And it's a great save from the goalkeeper, but Lanza was on the end of it there. Milivojev. Mil chair on the overlap. He's got tons of bodies to pick out, potentially. And he does! And he finds Sigur Jonsson. And within literally 10 minutes of falling behind, Sigur Jonsson scores the goal that puts us in front. That was a really nice finish from Siggy. It's nice to see him scoring a goal as well, starting through the middle. Just really strong build-up from us. Um, I don't know. I just think we look so much better going forward at the moment right now. Just a really aggressive force. It's a gorgeous ball in from Mil chair Oh, it goes through the defender's legs. The old lesser spotted long-range nutmeg. Go on, Candido. Pop this on Lancer's head. Oh, and he does, and it's hit the post and cleared. Find another good pass. He goes for Pavlish. Back for Candido. Back for Bruna. Ball whipped in. Glavash, Lancer, and it's 3-1. <laughs> Pierre Angelo Lancer scores his first goal for Sassuolo against his former side, and he does not look bothered one little bit. £21 million move in the summer, and I think it's paying off already. This is really nice football on the edge of their box, just moving it around brilliantly. Bruno with another great ball, and Glavash knocks it down, and on the full volley is Lancer for 3-1 before half time. You wouldn't have seen this last season. This would have been nil-nil. Well, I mean, that's a first half and a half, to be honest. Go down inside four minutes, and suddenly now it's 3-1 to us, and we've we had probably, I don't know, 70% of our games last season. We didn't create that much, and we've done it in the first half here. One more would be nice. I've made a couple of little subs to bring some of the new lads on as well, give them a little bit of a run out here. So we're going to see a bit of Rivas and a bit of Nissen as well. Glavash finds Nissen. Good block. Michal Cheya. To Lanza flicks it over the top for Josip Glavash, and it's four. Josip Glavash scores his second goal of the game, and it was coming from that lovely little flick over the top from Pierre Angelo Lanza, and it's 4-1 to Sassuolo. My friends, I think we're going to be in for a very enjoyable season. Look at that. Lovely flick on header. And Glavash scores his second goal of the night. That is gorgeous from him. I honestly thought that we'd stop scoring so many with those guys there. But my lord, it's 4-1 now. Ball in. And it's in. It's a goal at the back post from Andrea Duto. Well, that's frustrating. We need to get better at defending those, perhaps. But nevertheless, I told you there'd be lots of goals this season. The notes suggest it's a tight thigh, which is actually going to be fine and no nothing dangerous. He'll miss a couple of days of training and be back for next week, which is awesome. So it's looking like it's going to be Torino 2, Sa uh, Sa well, Sassuolo 4. Although it could still... He's back on the pitch now! Lanza! <laughs> tight thigh be damned. He is trying to score more goals for us here. And it's all over. Torino 2, Sassuolo 4. I think probably really we're... A Conceding twice in that game is a bit unacceptable, but look at the goal-scoring output from us. So, so much better. We just look... Oh, it's like night and day. Really, really good from the guys there. Glavash was superb. Uh, Lanza was also very, very good. I, I'm liking what I'm seeing a lot right now. 
Okay, we're back. Champions League group stage draw. It took a while because it's on the final day of the transfer window. We've just had an enormous bid for a player. Uh, we're going to talk about this more in the next episode, but it could well be something that's on the cards potentially to happen. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, looking at the groups now, which do we get? It's third pot. We do. Okay, good. That's really what I wanted. I wanted to make sure we were a third pot. Uh, oh, <laughs> imagine if we got the same group as Zagreb. Okay, I'm just going to do it and we'll come back sort of midway through so we can see where we're kind of looking at. But they've both got tough groups, really. There's no really any good groups looking like this. Maybe we can't get that one anyway. Group A? All right, so please not Group B. Okay, good. Or Group C, really, for that matter. No? Okay, Group D we can't have. Group B? Group E would be horrendous. Oh. Why? Oh, God. Liverpool and Barca. Hmm. Okay, please give us someone crap for the third team. It does seem that no matter who's left. Oh. Oh, yes. Ludogorets as the fourth as the fourth team in our group. Okay, so that looks. I mean, it. Our chances of getting out of this group are very slim compared to what we were last year. I think we have to be honest with ourselves. Liverpool and Barca are next level, whereas, you know. But I think that third place in this group is absolutely nailed on. So yeah, in fact, our next we're going to start the next episode off against Ludogorets because why the hell not, eh? And with a bit of Barcelona in there. Once again, starting both of our Champions League group games away from home to start things off. Uh, more updates of course on the transfer situation. Uh, if we do make that deal, potentially I could go back in for that centre-back I was talking about and maybe it would work. I, I just really don't know at this point. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be an interesting saga in itself. This feels like another long one. I apologise, but we've had a lot of stuff to talk about. So if you've enjoyed this and you're looking forward to the season, I sure as hell am. Drop a like that would be awesome if you're new to the channel subscribe to twitch on tuesday thursday saturdays so go follow that too and i'll see you guys tomorrow for some champions league goodness thank you so much for watching hold your gun happy ball. Bye -bye.